Okay, so we're going to do an example that's based off of the formula that we did before in the previous examples. Now, originally this formula was given to you with an F, but notice that I've modified this and put a G in there because the original equation we're given has a G. So, you may, they may give you some different letters here. It could be F, G, J, it could be different ones. All you got to do is just change that letter here and, and you'll be able to use it. Now your x sub 0 here in this problem is going to be negative 1, so we're going to put that in here. We're going to do a limit, h goes to 0. I have g of negative 1 plus h. I have g of negative 1, and on the bottom we have an h. So for this, I need to work this out separately. I'm going to do this off to the side because this is going to involve a little bit more work because we got a cube there instead of putting it all in at, uh, at once. So you, again, you can do either one if you want to expand it all out in this form you can or again you can work it out on the side like I'm doing here. I'm going to rewrite that and make it g of h minus 1. It's the same thing. That means I got to put h minus 1 into our expression in place of the t and we end up getting this. To we want to expand all this out and in order to do so we need to write it this way. This is really the same thing as h minus 1 written three times like that. In order to do this one I'm going to multiply two of these out first then I'll multiply it with this one and then I'll be able to simplify it more once I expand it all out. Okay so I'm going to do two of these first. I'm going to first start with h minus 1 and do that and then I'll leave that alone. These two I'm going to multiply out and we'll get this. So I'm going to get h squared minus h minus h is a minus 2h and then I get plus 1 and then I still have a minus 8 on the end. We don't want to forget about that. Next, we're going to multiply these two together. To do so, we're going to take h times everything inside the parentheses and then negative 1 times everything inside the parentheses. Okay, so when we do that, we're going to get h cubed minus 2h squared plus h and then I'm going to do negative 1 times everything. So I'm going to get negative h squared. Negative negative is plus 2h. Negative and, and positive is a minus 1 and then we also have a minus 8 on the end. So what we need to do here is we're going to do some simplifying with this. Again we want to simplify it as much as possible so we want to add the like terms. So first I have h cubed, which I can't do anything more with. Then I'll simplify the squares. I have two of these here, minus 2 and a minus, minus 3 h squared. I have the regular h's here, that's a plus 3 h. And I have a minus 1 and a minus 8, that's a minus 9 that I have right there. So this would be the fully simplified version of g of h minus 1. I'm going to put all that into our formula and then we can do some more simplifying. So we're going to come back to this one right here, we're going to put all that in. So here is our that part of the formula. Put that in. h cubed minus 3h squared plus 3h minus 9. I'm subtracting g of negative 1. Now in this case, again, whatever you, whatever you have here is always going to be the y value of the point that they give you. Of course we could also put negative 1 into our original expression, negative 1 cubed is still negative 1 minus 8 is still going to give you negative 9. But remember that we have to have a double negative here. You're subtracting that value, so negative negative will give you a positive. So what actually happens is these two are going to cancel out. The reason why you have negative 9 plus 9, that's going to cancel out, give you a 0. What you're left with is something where you can factor out an h. We want to factor out an h again because you don't want to divide by 0 when you put that back in. So for here, we're going to factor out an h and we get h squared minus 3h plus 3. Everything else is gone. h down below. We're going to cancel out the two h's and then I can just put 0 into that expression. When I do, I get 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 3. Again, we're doing that because we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. This cancels and we get 3. So 3 is going to be our slope. So our slope is 3 and now we want to find the equation of the tangent line. In the previous example, what I did was I used the point-slope formula in order to do that. 
Let me show you a different way that you could also do the same thing if you don't want to memorize another formula. You can actually use the slope intercept form here. You can use y equals mx plus b. We're going to put 3 in for m. The x is going to be negative, nine, negative 1 and your y is going to be negative 9. Let's put that all in. Negative 9 for y, a 3 in there for m, negative 1 for x. That's going to leave us with b. So when we so solve for b, we'll have the b and we'll have the m, then we can write our equation. All we got to do is add 3 to both sides, we get negative 6 for b, and then we can write our equation. y equals 3x and then minus 6. So that's an alternative way, if you don't want to use the point slope formula, you could go about it this way. This way you, have, you can avoid using an extra formula.